Okay. Hello, uh, I'm Christina Speller and I'm one of the founders of the Transnational Foundation for Peace and Future Research. And I will talk a little about integration, why and how. Um, and with an example of the Afghan youth in Sweden. So, why is integration needed? Well, if we start with a situation with a 60 million refugees who have had to flee their countries because of war, I think we have a moral duty to do something about that. Um, many uh, then say that, oh, it is too expensive, it's the Cost, we can't take it, we have lots of people out of work, and well, like that. But if you look at it in a, in a longer perspective, you can actually benefit from it too. Um, we have the demographic situation of Europe uh, with an aging population and actually some years ago I read that you the EU is uh, has calculated that we need 50 more millions young people in Europe to um, solve this problem about the aging population um, and also what is behind the refugees, the big powers, the arms trade. Um, we can't really uh, wait for uh, them to take responsibility of the disaster that they are causing. Um, and it's not only money that makes the world go around, it's also people meeting. Um, and when people, yes, and, and, uh, and then what happened last week when a three-year-old boy was washed ashore on an island in the Mediterranean, uh, that set off an avalanche of uh, willingness to, to help, and not only with money, but also with uh, welcoming refugees from uh, these areas into at least some countries in Western Europe and some places in those countries. Um, and when you have a meeting between people, uh, there might happen a dialogue, and when there is a dialogue between people from different walks of life, uh, you can have new solutions to old problems. Obstacles of this is, of course, xenophobia, uh, the fear of the stranger, that that is uh, always has been like that when when you are. When you meet something that you don't know anything about, you 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 get a bit hesitant. Um, and then there is also the uh, the attitude towards general generosity, and uh, that has changed. The Swedish author Henning Mankell, he uh, he said in. in an, in an interview that it seems as if the, the virtue of generosity has been replaced by the deadly sin of greed. And it's time that that is reversed again. And then we have the luggage of our own experiences, norms and values that is always on our back. 
in, even if we try to put ourselves in the shoes of the other, it's hanging there. So, um, and then it's um, the the fact that we very easily build an image of something that we hear, we read something, and um, um, and then we think that is the reality and uh, take for granted that that is the truth. And it's, it's human, but it's not very functional, and you often are cheated by yourself that way. But there is also solutions to that. Um, you can have a that about the image that was said by a social worker um, who worked with S Somali refugees at a family center in Linköping, Maria Sundval is the name. Um, and when she had a, a cultural interpreter, as they called it, uh, also from Somalia, but who knew a lot about the Swedish society as well. Um, it was much easier to, to work with um, these clients. Um, Um, and then I would, I would like to tell you something about the project that we worked with a couple, of, um, and it it was a project that was financed, but the. Uh, by the inheritance fund, um, and it was about uh, uh, the, the you simply start again with the project. Yes, <laughs> yeah. start from the beginning of the project. Yeah, um, I will tell you something about a project that we started in two thousand. Uh, and one of the, well, the, the uh, once again. <laughs> Sometimes you get simply stuck. That's the, that's how it is. <laughs> also, shifte plötzlich zu verstehen. Purpose. The purpose, yes. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I would like to yeah. tell you about a project that we started in 2010. The purpose of uh, what was to, uh, to uh, support people in uh, transition periods of life. And one of the target groups were young Afghan uh, unaccompanied children who came to this country. Uh, and um, we didn't know how to do it actually, but, but we, we, we started out by uh, seeing a, a number of young Afghani Boys, and the first time uh, we we had a lot of postcard that we put on the table. We spread it out, and um, um, 
they should choose one or two of those. Um, and so they did, I think there were uh, about uh, seven, eight of them by that time. Uh, and um, then we asked, why did you choose this postcard? And uh, we got different stories. Uh, one said, well, well, I chose this one because it shows an old house by a road in the countryside and it could be a house where my whole family could live mm -hmm. again. And another one, uh, there was a, it was a postcard from Venice in the night uh, with black water and, and they said that, well, it, it, it reminds me of when I sit by the water and throw stones into it because I feel stressed and after a while it gives me some peace. Mm -hmm. um, and another one, uh, that was a road and the road turned and he said, well, it's, it's like my life. I don't know where I'm going, but it is a road and I don't know what is happening around the corner, what I would expect. Um, another one was, um, it was a beautiful landscape, but it was uh, the morning dew, so it, it, it was a bit, um, Hoggy, sort of, mm -hmm. and and he said, "Well, it's it's like my life. It's I can't see it clearly. There is something disturbing the the picture." Um, it was then I I had an idea that that it would be good for them to make an exhibition out of their experiences somehow but we didn't talk about that at the start because we had to we had to build some kind of uh, trust and confidence before we could go on to that uh, and the, the the autumn went on and uh, my colleague and um, was quite well nothing is happening but then in the we started in September, and in uh, in December, once when we had been to this place in Malmö where they lived, uh, and was walking back to the railway station, it was snowing, and we met two of them, and um, and they were so happy to see us. So they hugged us. Oh, Anna! Oh, Christina! And and. And then we said, oh yes, now I think we've got them. Uh, and after that it, it really um, went quite well. So uh, during the spring they made an exhibition about the journey they made from Afghanistan to Sweden with all the stories, uh, well not all the stories because some were too difficult to, to uh, talk about, but um, they made drawings, paintings, we interviewed them and uh, wrote down these stories. And the vernissage was in, June, in May that year, 2011, and we thought that was, well, this will be the, the, the one week and then it's over, but they have learned something and those who see the, the exhibitions um, also have learned something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But some of the people who, who went there to see it, they were really moved by it and they, oh, couldn't we have this in, in our, uh, our town? We could have it at, at the library or uh, to show to our politicians uh, who don't really know if we should uh, welcome these 
unaccompanied minors. Uh, and so it went on. So now I think the exhibition ha has been shown like 27 times in almost uh, as many places. And it's still on ongoing. So um, there are now three more places to uh, where it will be shown this autumn. Mm. And then it's also included what happened after. And um, a, one main thing is that they were able to tell their stories to someone who listened. Uh, and that is very important when it comes to uh, it's it's it has a therapeutic um, effect mm -hmm. that you tell the story and someone is listening. Uh, so and um, but still. Um, they they have to build a new social context mm -hmm. um, because when you leave your country and and that is um, even if you leave it because you want to go somewhere else for other reasons that you are fleeing uh, you leave your social context mm -hmm. um, and you might not be aware of how important that was when you leave it. And you get to a new country and especially if you are alone, you don't have your family with you. Um, it is not easily, easily done to, to get a new one. Uh, and. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the boys, he said a couple of years after that, well, uh, we, we miss people who care about us, uh, who are proud of us, who comfort us. Um, so we feel a bit lonely. So that is really something that we should think about. There are a lot of people here that we could do something for and, and um, it's, um, it's well, you could start to smile and say hello and, and, and that is um, an opening mm -hmm. to something. I think I stopped there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you talked about <clears throat> building confidence. Yes. And um, my question is, how how did you do it? How 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 did you do it? Did you get there and go there and say, here, this is who we are? Or? Mm -hmm. We went there every week. Um, the same time, the same day. Okay. Uh, and sometimes there was only one there, uh, and sometimes uh, seven maybe. Okay. And they were drawing, and we were talking, and they were asking questions about it. It could also be that they wanted our help to solve something that mm -hmm. had happened at school. Uh, could you help us, you know, with this? I don't really understand what it was about. So, mm -hmm. so, um, and we went there even if there was only one there, so we came the next week, even so. Uh, and I think that was you, you, it takes time to build uh, confidence, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, it takes mutual. Uh, Trust. Mm -hmm. 
And, and that you don't have when you first meet. You have yeah. to get to know each other first, a yeah. little bit, you know, and then, then can I really rely on that person? Uh, and it's also important to, to show respect, of course. Yeah. And, yeah. and to uh, the attitude that uh, we were not going there to, to teach them something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we should be open, open to uh, learning something from them. So they sense that. Um, I uh, I suppose so because yeah. otherwise I don't uh, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. um, and the the also the stories I don't think they that they will tell those stories when we first met. It took yeah. some time because they, uh, well, they didn't know who we were. Uh, and uh, the first time, the first meetings, uh, we also had a had an um, interpreter or mm -hmm. cultural oh, right. yeah. interpreter uh, from Afghanistan. And, and and, and he told me afterwards that they were a bit suspicious, you know, where does she come from? Is she from the social uh, thing and should we trust her? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, then uh, more and more you, you uh, uh, this relation was built. And did you, did you ask them all the time questions, direct questions? As for their story, or did you just wait, or how did you do uh, it? When it came to the the exhibition, the preparations mm -hmm. for that, and and the initiative to make it the way it was made was mm -hmm. from one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that I think we should make an exhibition about our travel from Afghanistan mm -hmm. to. Sweden, um, and um, I think that was very important. It 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 wasn't me and my colleague who, who decided what they mm -hmm. should do, mm -hmm. and and also the way they wanted it. So, but but that was a, a and then uh, afterwards uh, we heard more stories, but those stories they did not want to, to, to have in public. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, so it's... it's um... what, what really struck me when I saw the exhibition mm -hmm. yesterday uh, is that only by seeing the small scenes mm -hmm. I realized uh, how far it is yes. and how long it must have mm. taken. Mm. I mean, it's not really new. Um, we could know it, but it never occurred to me that mm. it's a long, long way. Yes, and, and uh, I forgot to tell the story about um, one of the meetings we had in Malmö uh, when there was only one there. Mm -hmm. And he took then the opportunity to tell us his story. Mm -hmm. uh, he had been in Malmö for one year then, and uh, uh, he didn't speak so well Swedish, of course, and, and uh, uh, he told the story about how he lost his family when he was eight years old in a, in a city in Afghanistan. No, in, in um, uh, uh, Iran, where they had, had, had came, uh, and um, he showed with his hands, you know, like this, that uh, he lost his mother's hand. Mm. Um, and um, he was looking for them half of the night, and then he was taken to uh, Tehran, and there he was working for six years in a 
factory making handbags. What, eight years? Yes, so he was there between the age of eight and 14. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, was advised by other people there to try to go to Europe. Maybe he could have a better life. I mean, he had no relatives. He, he, he was just alone there with, with his... Uh, and it took him two years to get to, to get to Malmo, yes. So he was 16 and when we met him he was 17. Mm. So, um, and uh, now he has... Um, it took of course some years because he had, he had never gone to school. Uh, but he is now uh, at school, he speaks and writes and reads Swedish mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think he will really make it. <coughs> the, the other ones as well that we, um, that we met, I, we are still in contact with many of them and uh, they some are still at school, but others have had uh, an education now, and they work, and uh, I mean, they, they are used to work because they Obviously. already started when they were eight or something mm -hmm. at home, either in, in, the, uh, in the countryside, helping with the animals or the... Or the other things you do mm -hmm. uh, and um, well uh, many of them could uh, they, they didn't have a driver's license of course but mm -hmm. they could <laughs> even so they could uh, uh, um, use a car mm -hmm. they knew how it worked and also repair it if he did. Do you want to ask something else? I was just thinking um, that the examples may get um, create a world where I can imagine all of a sudden a little bit of mm, those mm. fates. And I was thinking whether there are girls also that come along there are uh, uh -huh. usually they have started out with the family uh -huh. and then the family has been split uh, either by the uh, smugglers or um, that some have been driven in a car or some have had to walk over a mountain and, and um, well, they they have uh, they have been split, and then they come here alone. And but the the real um, terrible thing is that many of those who come alone and are girls, they are pregnant when they come because they have been raped uh, during the the way here. So it's not an easy. Yes. Mm. Well, thank you. I think it's very important what you do. I have a question. I would like. To, yeah. Thank you for your lecture. Uh, my question is: uh, How do you see solutions for integration in Sweden for young people who come? Um, like people say now, the usual uh, word that they use for immigrants, mm. young immigrants. Mm. What do you see? How do you see solutions in the long term? In the long term, I think that uh, we need to be more more welcoming. We need to um, open our homes, uh, not necessarily to have someone living, but you you can. Uh, be what is called a contact family 
-hmm. where you can mm -hmm. I mean the house is open if if you want to come to have dinner if you want to come uh, and and uh, uh, have an excursion uh, you take someone when you with you uh, out in the countryside or, or, or um, to to show how um, how it is here and also of course to ask about uh, your background mm. what what is so so it, it, it is a mutual thing mm -hmm. since integration really is a mutual thing it, it, it has to be um, I don't think I said something about that did I about this in integration is a mutual process and you have to be open mm -hmm. and uh, you mm -hmm. the hands meet like that mm -hmm. and if we who are here are that like that and the one price and that also mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. nothing much happens mm -hmm. yeah, so so true. and and then you live mm -hmm. in sort of um, different society in the society mm -hmm. And that is no good because that is uh, not a way to to make the society uh, progress. Thank so you, you have to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I can see that you have a report. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that those who are seeing this. Uh, just have a sense of the documentation. One kind is the uh, exhibition, and the other one is this report that is available in Swedish. And it's it's also a blog mm -hmm. at uh, the transnational.org um, website, so you can read more about it there, if you can read Swedish. <laughs> mm, mm, but mm. but it's um, it's made uh, with the contributions of all who were involved in this. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not only the target group of these young Afghani boys, but it's it's also the the, the rest of the project. Mm, thank that you. And it can be ordered. It can People be can write to the Transnational Foundation and order a copy of it. Yes. So, and now we will take a look at the exhibition because it happens these days around the 30th anniversary to be exhibited here at the Foundation. So that's the next thing we will do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Och det har de redan gjort. <laughs>